all the great iconoclastic figures of early ethological theory, there is none that represents the troubled and disparate nature of his times it's quite so aptly as the late C.F. Hibben, intellectual, athlete, inventor, and renowned pie-eating champion. Hibben is known not merely for his massive linguistic tomes, but for his skill with spear, atlatl, and throwing axe. Not to mention his gut-wrenching penis sheath work amongst the naked hottentot of the inner trobriums. Yet despite the brilliant ramblings of his gargantuan treaties, Letters to my Sam, it took the academic community over 20 years to acknowledge Hibben and his 3,000 volume contribution to ethological theory. Indeed, it was not until the long winter following his regrettable fifth Trobrian foray that Hibben finally succeeded in attaining that ever-elusive badge of intellectual succor, Hatjaw's gilded pipey of intelligent discourse. Nestled amongst a select audience of colleagues, underlings, and several of his more virulent detractors, C.F. Hibben was finally lauded for his translations of insect languages and his enormous collection of tribal penis sheaths. In many respects, the evening of the 41st annual Gilded Pipey Ceremony represents the high water mark for the late savant, the crowning moment of his short and turbulent life. Yet despite the potential of a new and more successful program of research, this happy event immediately preceded his plunge into a deep and everlasting morass of meaningless intellectual obsession from which he was, sadly, never to escape. While researching the 67th volume of his own 33,000 page tome, Letters to Myself, he had been discovered, quite by accident, a strange mathematical equation which seemed to prove the actual color and shape of death itself. This discovery, coupled with his newfound notoriety, launched the overworked savant into a deep and profound state of intellectual rapture. It was as if he chanced upon a gigantic stone and set about trying to make everyone else believe it was in fact a Frenchman. Professor D. Gales, CCF. Despite the vehement objections of his colleagues and wives, Hibben plunged wholeheartedly into proving this regrettable equation. Yet, after transcribing two 1,200-page volumes on the subject, he admitted that he had come no closer to the solution of the death equation than he had been at the outset of his study. Needless to say, within two years of his greatest achievement, the savant had descended into a state of semi-madness, sleeping rarely, forever scribbling indecipherable equations and screaming obscene epithets about his giant Trobriandian man-wife, the womanly Mertz. It was at this time that Hibben is thought to have disappeared. With his library deserted, his manuscripts left unbound, and his beloved penis sheaths left to rot, the intellectual giant was presumed dead. The eulogy read at Hibben's poorly attended funeral service by his friend and colleague, Professor M. B. Pinsford, very adequately and succinctly sums up his idiosyncratic career. Fibers of our hearts, Ever before, since in these twilights, the wind, the tundra, and the hail, <laughs> history, children's souls, I doubt the vast awakening of seas beyond us. <laughs> Given.
Yet the story of C.F. Hibben does not end here. Shortly following his funeral service, a series of strange epictograms began to appear in the most unlikely of places. Hot dog stands, tunnels, freeway underpasses, bridges in the abandoned streets and byways of Skid Row, in the territories of wastrels, mountebanks, and ne'er-do-wells, equations that bore the trademark insignia of the tortured savant. C. F. Hibbeton. Thus concludes our up-close program on the great thinkers of early atheological theory. Next week, tune in for Vengeance of the Gods, the violent and unhappy times of Professor M.C. MacGregor.